Okay, time for another episode of our bioweapon series, or biological threats and how to protect yourself from them. In this one I'm not going to be able to pronounce properly, but it's botulinum. And basically it's the bacteria itself that causes botulism, um, also known as Botox, funnily enough, because Botox surgery uses this stuff. Um, so I'm just going to call it botulism for the sake of the video, if I remember that, or Botox if I forget that, not botulinum or however it's pronounced. Um, so what's this? Basically it's kind of a food poison. Um, that's how you're most likely to get it, uh, but it's an incredibly deadly poison. So there's lots of ways you can get it from you know not preparing food properly um, and all things like that. Another big way it comes into contact with people is when canned foods aren't heat treated properly and everything else. So you have like a canned food, um, you know it's been canned and stored not very well, and then you can get botulism when you eat the food that's in it. Uh, so botulism is one of those things where every sort of 10 years there seems to be a major outbreak somewhere in the west. Uh, you have a few dozen people affected if it happens in a restaurant or with some sort of food. Um, it's a bit like if you now and again will see on the news, and as I say I don't want to watch the news much anymore because it's all scaremongering. It's a bit like when you watch on the news and see that there's been a um, case of E. coli or whatever it is, you know, where you get the, um, now and again, some food like factories have contaminated food lines so botulism's like that but a lot more serious it's not you know a bit of food poisoning it can be fatal if not treated properly I mean luckily um, in the West if you end up getting uh, botulism you can be treated fairly well in the hospital it seems with antibiotics if it's obviously caught fast enough now the interesting thing about the poison itself the botulinium whatever it was called the um, is it could actually be used for bioterrorism and apparently it's very deadly in like the dose, it's one of the most lethal substances on earth in terms of how much is needed to kill a person or an Audi 50. Um, so basically, compared to something like nerve agent, you need far, far less of it, which is kind of crazy when you think about how deadly some nerve agents are. But the thing is with it is obviously it doesn't get you through skin contact, so it's nowhere near as good as weaponizing as a nerve agent because, you know, a mask would protect you if it was a gas. Absolutely fine. So, yep. If somebody had used it as a gas and you knew it was coming, you could put your mask on, you'd be absolutely fine. Um, you wouldn't need to worry about NBC suits or anything like that. I imagine you'd have to be careful that you didn't get on your hands and then later touch something and eat it or whatever. But it mostly gets you through ingestion or inhalation. Um, so that's why most people get botulism from food that's contaminated, not, you know, like randomly uh, getting it from touching something. So it's quite likely to happen, supposedly, if food isn't prepared properly. You'll have to do a lot more, more of your own research on that because I'm not an expert on, you know, proper pr pr uh, preparation of food and food storage. And it's often like, you know, don't, I suppose, have cold and hot meat touching each other or don't use the same knives on holding cold and hot meat. Apparently you have to be careful with tinfoil on some things as well. Like don't cook something in tinfoil and then let it cool down in the tinfoil or something like that that can cause it as well. But... Basically, why it's sort of scary as a bioweapon is the sense that how little is needed, and if it was poured into a water supply or something, um, you know, or poured into somebody's food, it'd be a very good assassination drug. So, um, it's one of those things where, obviously, it's probably not too popular for bioterrorism, because there's a lot nastier things out there, and as we know, most terrorists like to blow themselves up, rather than actually... Um, you know, coming up with clever chemical and biological methods, but that doesn't mean it won't happen. Uh, for the average person, you're much likely to face it from being, you know, getting food poisoning from an accidental source than you are to actually get it from the bioterrorist route. But the uh, dangerous thing is, obviously, that you can have the liquid concentrated in such a way that it would be very, very lethal in its liquid form, where it could be put into a water supply, put into food and everything like that. Now, I have no idea if Brita filters or other conventional water filters would be any good at filtering this stuff out. That's something to kind of research. As I said, I don't think it's one of the massive threats, but botulism is kind of like B, and I started with anthrax, which is A. I don't think I'm going to do this whole series um, alphabetically. But it's kind of one of those things where you think, what if somebody did tamper with the water supply? Is there enough safeguards in place so it can get through? What if somebody did try and poison foods with it? You know, all stuff like that. So funnily enough, as I was saying, it is what they use for Botox as well, because they inject it into your muscles, so they inject something very poisonous into your muscles to uh, give you a better smile or something like that. Uh, you know, I never really understood plastic surgery and all the appeal of that, to be honest, but um, there you go. So botulism or 
botulinum or whatever it's called. Um, the Botox poison. Yeah. V quite nasty, horrible stuff if you were to um, come into contact with it. Thankfully it's one of those things that most people don't and if they do it's in a low enough dose that they can be treated successfully in hospital. But, you know, it's just one of those things to think about as we get on with this series. What happens if somebody does get a hold of this stuff? Because the problem with a lot of these things are that you've got, like, these really well-meaning scientists and everything that research all these things, but then they have the pure poison in vials, and you think, what well, if somebody actually stole one of those and then wanted to do harm with it? So, yep, that's going to be this one for the biological weapons, botulism, botulinium, or whatever it's called, and uh, Botox. Those three, all related. Uh, once I've done this biological weapons series, I might look at more nuclear weapons, things such as nuclear warheads and things like the neutron bomb, uh, because a lot of people have been asking me about nukes and radiological weapons again, so I guess we could do a radiological series as well as um, nuclear radiological as well as the biological one. As I said, with the chemical one, I've added a couple more videos as well into that about um, Novichok, because that's still sensationally in the news. Uh, but ho hopefully you've enjoyed this video, as I said, this isn't one of my most fleshed out videos, because... Um, you know, I don't think it's that much of a threat, but it's an interesting one. I wouldn't want to skip it because I'm sure some people would find it interesting. So there you go. Botulism.